Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a list of a bunch of fairy tale folklore retellings. I wanted to make a video talking about some books that I think are perfect for the fall, and I just kept realizing that I tend to associate fall with fairy tales, and I thought there are enough retellings that I could do a whole video, which is this, dedicated to these. So if you are somebody who feels that fall is the perfect time for these, I'll have this, and in addition to this, I will have a separate fall recommendations that won't include any of these. It'll be all entirely different. I'm gonna start with House of Salt and Sorrows. This is one that I think is perfect, not only because it's a retelling, but it's a retelling that gets creepy. <laughs> so it took a classic story and then it made it scary, which I think is great for fall, for Halloween. It follows 12 dancing princesses, which is a story that I wasn't particularly familiar with, but apparently there was a Barbie movie about the 12 dancing princesses. This is nothing like the Barbie movie, which I haven't seen, but I can guarantee you they're very different. This book definitely had a lot of tropes in it and it had a lot going on. There were so many different things that made it almost chaotic, but I actually kind of felt like that contributed to the creepiness of it because the setup is that there's this family that had 12 people in it and a bunch of daughters and the main character, a bunch of her sisters keep dying, the family, everyone thinks they're cursed and so everybody kind of avoids them out of respect. There's supposed to be this mourning period that lasts a long time, but they all keep on dying. So there's kind of always in mourning. And so they're like, well, maybe we should like stop being in mourning all the time and just try to live a little because we're just always sad all the time. But then there starts to be some, is there actually a curse on them? Suspicions, weird stuff starts happening. One of her youngest sisters starts seeing creepy stuff. And then when she talks about it, you're like, what the heck is going on? Anytime young kids are like, I saw Susie, the dead one. You're like, what? There's this inherent creepiness. They live in a manor by the sea. So there's a lot of atmosphere. Definitely, like I said, kind of a tropey read but I had such a great time with it. Next up would be the Lunar Chronicles. This is a story that is science fiction retellings within each book. So the first one is Cinder, a retelling of Cinderella, but sci-fi. And then you have, you have characters like Rapunzel, Little Red Riding Hood. They pop up throughout the series and each book is kind of like their book, but it adds on top of the previous book for this one arc throughout the story. And I think these are great, not only for people who enjoy young adults, but also just in general, if you have a sibling, a child, somebody in your life who is younger and they're kind of transitioning into the young adult age range, this one feels like a great transition out of middle grade because it is slightly more youthful, but the stakes are pretty high. And I just think that the way that Marissa Meyer takes some of these traditional fairy tales and then makes them science fiction, I think she does it in a way that's really creative and really, really fun. Next up would be one of the adult fantasy books on this list, and that would be Uprooted. A little disclaimer, I personally did not love this book, but I'm always happy to encourage other people to check out books even if I didn't love them. And this one is so good for fall because it's very atmospheric and the setting is a creepy forest setting. It is Central Eastern European folklore, and you're dealing with just this forest that, it takes a lot for me to find a forest scary, but this forest was legitimately scary because usually I'm like, I love the trees, they wouldn't betray me. And those trees, they're gross. <laughs> they do really weird stuff to people and there's weird stuff in the forest that affects people and then those people try to like kill other people and it's bizarre. And the setup is that there's this wizard, this magic user who lives in this tower and he protects this little village from this scary forest. And in order to kind of pay him back, he gets to have one of the village girls live with him in the tower, which is weird. And nobody really knows what happens, but the girls come out of it eventually and they're like, yeah, everything was fine. I'm gonna go live for bigger and better things now. And then they dip. And the main character is somebody who gets selected which is weird because she's not the usual pretty face that tends to get selected. And the guy's kind of mean to her and you just kind of follow her around as they're trying to figure out how to deal with this forest, as well as some political things that are affected by what happens in this forest. Next up, we have Spin the Dawn and a sequel, Unravel the Dusk. This is a completed duology and it is very loosely based off of a folklore story. It is a traveling, love story, I would say, when I have heard it spoken of in the past, I didn't realize how much 
at the forefront the romance was going to be. It's not a super steamy romance, but it is a traveling love story, so this this character is witnessing a lot of very whimsical type of things. And I personally feel that if you're a fan of something like the Enchantment of Ravens, that you'll probably like this story. The setup is that the main character, she kind of has a little bit of a Mulan setup where her dad is supposed to be selected for something, but he's not able to do it, so she disguises herself as a boy because only boys can fulfill this particular role. She disguises herself as a boy and goes in his place, and she has to keep up this image as a boy the entire time that she's competing in this particular competition. The difference though from it and Mulan is that she's not going into the army, she's competing to become the Emperor's tailor. Very fairy tale esque very whimsical. If you like love stories, I think you're gonna feel like you're reading a fairy tale. If you like romance in your fantasy stories, I think this one is perfect. Next up is one that technically is young adult, but I consider it new adult and even maybe a doll, and that would be A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. This is another one that I didn't absolutely love for my own personal tastes, but I do think that a lot of people get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It is kind of like a sexy time Beauty and the Beast retelling. There are some steamy scenes in the first one. Most of the steam happens later in the rest of the series, but it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but with Faye. So the main character, she kills a wolf at the beginning of the story, and it turns out that wolf was actually one of the Fae. So now she has to live in the Fae land, kind of as this one person's prisoner, this one Fae's prisoner. And she's kind of locked in this house, this beautiful house, and she's learning all about the Fae. If you like what I was talking about with Spin the Dawn, if you like romance in your fantasy, but you want the steam, you want it to be a little more sizzle, that's this one. Sticking with Beauty and the Beast retellings would be A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I loved this book. I loved the main character, Harper. It is a dual point of view where you get the girl's perspective, Harper, and then you are getting the beast's perspective, Ren. And it is a portal fantasy, so Harper's from our own world. She's very relatable. She has a lot of things going on in her personal life that I think very much endear you to her, but she is so resilient. She has so much drive and she ends up in this random fantasy world. And there is this young prince who at the end of every season turns into a rage monster. He cannot control it. It's this curse that's been put on him. And then he just kills a bunch of people and then it starts over. And the only way to break the curse is to have somebody fall in love with him. That's the Beauty of the Beast retelling aspect of it, except for he's typically a handsome prince until the end when he goes and slaughters a bunch of people, which obviously makes the stakes very high. But Harper is also like, I don't love you. I don't know you. And that's also like, will they fall in love? Will they, won't they? I think there's a lot to it that definitely makes you want to turn the page. I think the writing style is very gripping and it's fast paced. I very much enjoyed this book. Next up would be another one of our adult fantasy stories and that would be Fables. It's actually a comic book series and it's such a fun setup. It takes a bunch of fairy tale characters. So it's not a direct retelling necessarily, but it takes a bunch of traditional fairy tale characters and then something is going on in the homeland, which is where they're from, their fantasy worlds, and it forces them to live in our world, glamoured to look like people. The main characters would be Big B, which is the big bad wolf. He's their sheriff. And then Snow from Snow White. She kind of has an administrative type of position. They often work together. It is so fun. And it's also a little dark at times, which I think is very reminiscent of the more grim fairy tale feel. Next up, we have a contemporary book, and that would be Geekerella. This is a Cinderella retelling, but definitely pulls from a lot of the geeky fandoms. It follows a girl who has the Cinderella setup. She's living with her stepmom and her stepsisters. Her laugh sucks. She hates it, but she finds a lot of comfort in this TV show that she's really obsessed with. It's kind of a Star Trek vibe and they're making a reboot, but the reboot is going to be a movie. They've cast some hunksical young guy and she's like, this guy sucks for this role. They're just picking him because he's hot and everybody loves him right now. And then you also get his perspective and he doesn't have the easiest life necessarily because he's got a lot of other things going on. Through some unusual circumstances, these two end up talking a lot online and growing very close to one another, not realizing that they are who they are, which is 
the big famous actor that she thinks is terrible for the role. And her being his biggest critic, she has a whole blog about how he's terrible for the position. They don't know any of this. And silliness ensues. Next up, we have To Kill a Kingdom. And this is a Little Mermaid retelling, but it's not as cutesy type mermaids. It's more of siren mermaids that are out to kill people. And that is our main character. She is trying real hard to impress her mom, who's really ruthless. And there is another perspective who's a prince, and he is somebody who loves to be out in the seas. These two characters meet, and it's kind of a enemies to lovers trope. I personally did not totally love this book, but it is a standalone. A lot of people really enjoyed it. For me, I just never felt that connected. It wasn't that there was anything wrong with the book. I just never fell head over heels with the characters. I didn't feel the stakes were as high as maybe I wanted. But I think as far as retellings go, if you're looking for a harsher version of The Little Mermaid, where the, the female perspective, the mermaid perspective, is a little more vicious, that's this book. Last on this list would be Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is a Queen of Hearts origin story. And I remember back when I read this, it has been quite a few years ago, but when I read this, I thought, oh, okay, it's gonna be an origin story. We obviously know how it ends. But as you're reading it, the main character is very sweet. She just has dreams of having her own little bakery. So you're like, this chick, this chick's gonna be the queen of hearts. I don't want this chick to go bad. And then as things are unfolding, you're like, is she gonna go bad? Is this, are you gonna pull one on me? It turns out everything's gonna be happy. I can't tell. And then I got so into the story because I felt so bad for the girl and I just really wanted her to have a happy ending. And I'm like, but that's not where it's going. Similar to Fables, I think it has the fairy tale feel with hints of grim fairy tale where it gets a little darker, maybe a little more violent that you than you would maybe expect. That's it for some fairy tale folklore retellings. Definitely let me know of some that you would recommend to people for fall or just in general. What are some of your favorite retellings? Thanks so much for watching though. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later.